The European Union Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen has pledged to almost double the bloc's donation of COVID-19 vaccine doses to low-income countries. She made the announcement in her annual State of the Union address at the European Parliament. She was the real star at the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Paralympics gold medalist Beve Vio. She has managed to achieve all of that by living up to her belief that if it seems impossible, then it can be done. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen brought Italian fencer Vio as a guest of honor to her annual State of the European Union speech. An example of achievement also reflected in her outlook on the Union itself. She praised the EU's success in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic and she presented the new EU health agency, an attempt to join forces and to share knowledge. With our proposal, we get the HERA authority up and running. This will be a huge asset to deal with future health threats earlier and better. Von der Leyen has pledged another 200 million COVID-19 jabs to low-income countries, almost doubling the bloc's vaccine donations. Not enough for some. We praise ourselves for the high vaccination numbers in Europe, while only 3% of the African population have received one dose. Besides the ongoing pandemic, Ursula von der Leyen named the climate emergency as one of the major challenges for the EU. She said the recent floods in Germany and wildfires in southern Europe were just further proof of this. Climate change is only man-made. But since it is man-made, we can do something about it. Especially the Greens consider this something as not ambitious enough. We are the European Union. We are the richest uh, and the, in so many ways the most free region of the world. So we need to stand in the front line. We need to be the best. A sentence Ursula von der Leyen would probably approve. But she asked other parts of the world to do more as well. First and foremost, the United States. Well, to talk more about the EU's pledge to nearly double its vaccine donations, I'm joined now from Western Nigeria by Oyewale Tamori, a former WHO regional virologist from Africa. A warm welcome, sir. What do you make of the EU's pledge to ramp up vaccine distributions to low-income countries? I think it's, thank you very much. I think it's a very great, great thing. Um, we're moving in the right direction. Many more people will get vaccinated and the hope to get to that herd immunity will be, uh, will be achieved in a very short time. And it, it's a great thing for the whole world, and not just for Africa only, because we are all together in this business of COVID prevention and control. Is it enough, though, to meet, for instance, Africa's demand for vaccines? No, it's not enough, but it's a long way off. I mean, if we get these uh, 220, and I'm told there's another 180 million coming in, we will very, uh, vaccinate uh, 10 times the number we have now, and that's a step in the right direction. Uh, we need to get more vaccines, and I'm sure the, now that the African governments are coming together, working together, uh, that should be an easy thing to do the, the next few, uh, by the time next year. Now, this pandemic has painfully exposed a very uneven world, huge vaccine disparities. The EU, for now, is still resisting demands to waive pay uh, patents on vaccines. Is backing a project to produce vaccines locally in Africa the solution? Yeah, it, it, I think it, it's, a, it's one of the steps we need to take uh, about the issue of the vaccine, uh, the patent. But then there are other things. There are other enzymes, there are other uh, products which are under uh, country, different country control programs. Um, it's going to take a, a much longer time to get all through all those uh, approvers. However, we want to take this step by step. Patent is the first thing. Others will follow if we succeed with the patent. What is the situation right now in, in your country, Nigeria? 
Well, we we have not vaccinated as much as we want. Uh, I think we really need about two, three percent of, of uh, the people we need. And that to me is really not acceptable. But I think the government is trying to make efforts to get more vaccines, um, which we will have gotten more than we're getting right now. But I'm hoping that with this uh, in input from Europe and other places and the efforts by the AU, we will get to where we need to get to as quickly as possible. What is the main stumbling block in, uh, for instance, your country and, and across the continent? Because it's not just uh, doses alone that will help control the pandemic. I understand there is also a lot of va vaccine hesitancy. Well, you, you know, when people start talking about hesitancy, you talk of hesitancy when you have the vaccine available to everybody. We don't really know whether what we have is actually hesitancy or the non-availability of the vaccine. I mean, you can't be talking of hesitancy when there's no vaccine to, 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 to give to people. When we have enough of the vaccine, then we know how much of the hesitancy there is there. There is some of it, but I don't think the, if vaccines come in, I'm sure our people will come out and get the vaccines. But get the vaccines first, then you know whether you have hesitancy or not. Oyewale Tamori, former WHO regional virologist for Africa. He's been giving us our reaction to the EU's pledge to nearly double its vaccine donations. Sir, thank you for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much.